so I'm going to go through the study set. There were a couple questions that came up uh, before the study set that I want to go over for everyone. One was about the syllabus. Um, again, I I posted the syllabus. I had changed the syllabus and then didn't save my change. On Wednesday, I'm going to do the office hour the same as Monday, so 5 to 6 p.m. And then the lecture will be at this time from 6 to 8. That just allows it to be consistent both days. And I'll fix that and repost it. You don't need to print it. But then every Monday, Wednesday, um, the Zoom will open at 5 o'clock. And I can be here. I'm often here like 10 minutes early, but there were a couple of you signed on at 4 because of that typo. And then at 6 o'clock, I will start going over the study set and start recording. Um, and then we'll do lecture. And then I will also stay after. Um, so if there's people, some people can't get here early. Some people have to leave and then they can come back. Um, all right, that was the first thing. Second question is about lab. Um, actually, one thing here is the question was about the next study set, so, or skill set, we should call it that, because study makes it feel like you have to study. So uh, the week two folder will have what is due Monday in it and what's due next Wednesday. But if you just play along with me, the stuff due Wednesday is the lecture on Monday. Um, the lecture today, then that's the study set two. I numbered the lectures the same as then the study set. So, sorry. Uh, the week two folder is scheduled to open tomorrow, Thursday at 8 a.m. And I'm planning to do that for each week. Um, and again, it will be on Thursday morning in case I want to make a change. Um, and the exception to that, I said this in the email, is the lab. Um, I'm in the process of rewriting the lab, and uh, I just need the weekend to be able to do that. Um, and it's not due until next Saturday, so I, you, you'll have plenty to do, and it's the weekend, so you probably will be doing something other than chemistry. Um, I did want to talk about the lab that is due Saturday. Um, we're going to go over the metric stuff today in lecture, and I'll even do the first two of them um, to, so that you see how to do it. And if you want to stay after or tomorrow evening, I do have an office hour from 6 to 7, um, and you want me to look at it. The other parts of the lab involve you watching a video and just writing a paragraph on your comments. So, Katie, that was like... Uh, the history one that you watched. So there's a video where you watch the history. I think it's like 45 minutes. And then you just write something that's, that struck you about the video. So it might have been the thing about making gold from the eggshell. Um, and so this was a question two people had for me. In the video, I joked um, that you could try making the recipe uh, for extra credit. And you can. I don't think you, you will be able to do it. But it was an alchemist recipe where they were trying to make gold, starting with egg yolk. Um, so if you're able to do that, you'll probably drop the class and move somewhere because you have all the gold in the world. Uh, I would like one thing, though, before you did that, I would like to know where you got your divine water from, because that's what everybody's always looking for is the divine water. Um, but anyway, you can talk about it. There's no right or wrong answer. It's kind of me getting to know you a little bit. Uh, and then there's another video. It has a link in there to the powers of 10. There's three different ones. You just have to watch one of them. Um, and then the other question that came up before class, October 1st is Thursday. Tomorrow, depending when you watch this, it might be today. Uh, there is the healthy change video to make a healthy change for the month of October. Um, you can talk to me if you have questions on that, but you make a change, like eating three pieces of fruit every day for the month of October. It is tough. Or eating a salad or a green smoothie every day. Um, or if you do McDonald's or you do energy drinks, giving them up for the month. Um, the first week is the hardest part. Giving up candy for the month because it is October. So just do it. And, and have somebody in your life do it with you. And at the end of the month, there'll be a folder that will appear for that October 31st 
I guess that's week five, um, and that will get submitted at the end of that week on October 31st. So just do it, do all the extra credit. With that, um, I sent another email this morning, Wednesday morning, uh, and had a bonus in it. And I wanna make a comment, uh, almost everybody has had me respond to them. To get the bonus, you have to answer, there is an extra part of the question, and it does have a name. I want the next element, um, and you have to, you're gonna have to Google it. Uh, it has a name now. It did not uh, a couple years ago, and most of our periodic tables are missing it, like the ones I have in here don't have it. So the bonuses get a little bit more challenging. They're free points, just do them. Um, so then, yeah, nobody has to take the final, including me. We all get to go. I already made my res I made my reservations today to go see my mom at Christmas. So, um, all right. Any questions? I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna walk through your study set. Um, this is our first day something was due. There is the grace period, including for your teacher because I keep making mistakes. Um, we're human and forgiveness is like our motto. That's my big lesson right now this week. Um, your study set is due before six o'clock. It's an honesty thing. Um, and I'm just looking to see that you tried it. I'm not gonna grade your study set. You're, you're gonna get a five if you get it in and you've done everything. If you didn't do everything, then you lose a point because you're gonna turn it in late. I'd rather you turn it in late and do the whole thing. You have until the midterm to turn it in. Um, all right, I recommend all of you have some color. I would have like a pink pen, some kind of bright pen. And as we're going through it, you're gonna self-correct. I'm gonna be filling out my homework and then I will scan and post this. But I'm in this Zoom until 8.30 or nine o'clock usually with uh, one or two students. So that may not happen until tomorrow. So it, um, if it's not there, like and you're wanting to look at it on Friday, uh, send me an email. It will be in the folder with um, with the study set. So week one folder. Um, and so just remind me because I'm sure I will forget to do that because I've never done that before. Um, but that way, if you want to go back like for the midterm and you're still not understanding a question or you thought you wrote something down wrong. Um, all right. So number one is just our protons, neutrons and electrons. So the one that's not in the nucleus are electrons. Uh, positive is protons. Nucleons is protons and nu neutrons. Nucleon just means it's in the nucleus. And that's the same answer for D. The protons and the neutrons are both about 1 a.m. U. They are often called um, collectively the heavy subatomics. And that comes up on the next question, actually. Uh, so the heavy subatomics mean your protons and neutrons. And again, the word nucleon means your protons and neutrons together. Um, all right, so number two, it's a true false. What's wrong means false. Uh, the only one that was correct was A. B, C, and D are wrong. Now that's all you had to do for the question, but you should understand why. Um, question number two is actually all about the nucleus, and the key is A is ex is very correct. The nucleus is extremely heavy. It's very massive. Um, question B, to my humble soul, is the most wrong statement you could make. Uh, the nucleus, as they keep studying it, the volume gets smaller and smaller and smaller. The volume is so infinitesimally small, yet all the mass is concentrated in there. It's really cool when we get into the quantum world, it's um, actually fascinating. So that's why B is wrong. It has almost no volume. Uh, and that makes it extremely dense. We're gonna talk about density tonight. Um, and, 
Um, so it is extremely dense. Why C is wrong. And then D, it cannot be negative. It can only be positive because it's the protons. All right, number three for the notation. The protons are going to tell you the element. So that's what we're looking at. So one proton would be H. And then to show me the full symbol, the lower number is going to be your protons, which is your atomic number. We don't actually, if our protons and electrons are the same, which they are on this whole study set, we, we don't worry about that for right now. We'll deal with the electrons uh, in two weeks actually and then the whole rest of the term is all about the electrons so the first two weeks we look at the nucleus and the mass uh, and then we go into the electrons because they determine chemical reactivity uh, the other piece is the protons plus the neutrons give us the mass number so the two of them together give us the mass number the mass number is always a whole number. And it is not on your periodic table. Well, it could be, but it's not. This is, this question, the hydrogen ends up with a two. Hydrogen, this is an isotope. Hydrogen has three isotopes. What makes it hydrogen is the one proton. If there is one proton, it is designated as H. The mass can be one, two, or three. Uh, for hydrogen, they actually gave them names. Nothing else has names for the isotopes. Uh, somebody asked me this, actually, because they said they Googled it, and they were kind of confused. Um, so most of hydrogen is H1. Uh, this number down below is the atomic mass. So that is the atomic mass. That is not the mass number. I just wanted to remind you the atomic mass is the average of the isotopes. And so it's going to be closest to the most abundant. Um, hydrogen one with zero neutrons actually is 99.9% .9 of hydrogen. But they made, there is H2. We're going to run into it next Monday a lot because we do um, radioactivity. Uh, and then tritium is H3. So you just go with whatever it gives you. All right, 10 protons is neon. And we add the two up, so we would have 22. Um, if you just write the mass number, I'm OK with that symbol. Uh, the question did say show the atomic number. So the atomic number is always the lower number. The mass number is always the upper number. Again, on your periodic table, they always show the atomic number on top. I don't know why, um, and that's really hard for students the first week. All right, the next one, the protons 12, which would be Mg, that is magnesium. Uh, we get the same mass number, but it's not the same element. So these are not isotopes. Um, the term isotope means they're the same element, and they have a different mass. This is like the opposite possibility, same mass, but different element. There is a fancy name for it, but you don't need to worry about it. But I point that out. That's why that question's there. All right, number 50 is SN. Tin is a sin. Uh, and so it's number 50. Now, something that a lot of people do is then to get their mass, they look at the periodic table. The only thing we're getting on the periodic table is the 50 and the SN. These two numbers we add up, and we get 119. I keep going unless somebody has a question. Just push your space bar and just say, hey, uh, can we go back over if you have a question? Um, all right, number four. What are we doing? We're just doing protons, neutrons, electrons. So the atomic number, we have 10 protons. 
uh, we subtract the two 10 neutrons and keep it neutral. Um, yeah, keep it neutral. Don't change your electrons. That's going to happen after the midterm. On the worksheet, I did do one where I changed the electrons. So um, just be aware of that. It's a worksheet. It's a quarter point if you catch that. Uh, and show the symbol with the charge. We did one the other day. All right, number 48 is CD. Um, by the way, just it didn't ask for names. Uh, but cadmium is in all your cell phones. And it's why your cell phones are toxic waste. Um, it's why China won't take our cell phone waste anymore because of the cadmium. But the atomic number is 48 protons, 48 electrons. And then we subtract, I think it's 62, sorry, neutrons. And you're going to need your calculator for the lecture part of this. Um, we'll talk about that. So you can always put it in your calculator. All right, tin is number 50. Uh, you need to know that tin is SN. So uh, the Latin name was Sanus. Um, and then right below it is plumbum or lead. So 50 protons, 50 electrons, and we subtract, and that is 69 neutrons. Yes. All right, and then CU is copper uh, and you would find it on your periodic table so 29 protons 29 electrons and then when we subtract we get 34 neutrons so i didn't have this the other night when i was in your class this is the periodic table maybe i did that we usually use it doesn't have the names um, i actually posted one in your week one folder uh, that has nice color coding and stuff, but it, you, it's, it has names really little. You do want to become familiar with the names because um, it just helps you. Uh, but you, you absolutely should probably have a periodic table with the names because that way in an exam um, you're going to become familiar and you'll be all right. All right, number five, gallium is GA. It is number 31. Uh, and it was named for Galileo, by the way. Uh, when we look at the periodic table for gallium, it's this mass is the average of the isotopes. It's going to always be closest to the most abundant. So since the average is 69.72, that means gallium 69 is the most abundant. So you can write, write on your homework, the average is, right? So our average mass is closest to the most abundant. You have one of these on the worksheet too. Uh, and the average is from the periodic table. All right, so for the neutrons, we just subtract the 69 minus the 31 which is the protons, and we will get, what, 38 neutrons is our answer. All right, number six. Let's kind of keep going unless somebody slows me down. Um, the atomic number is the protons. And I usually keep going, and then somebody will say, uh, isn't that also the electrons? So I'm going to put in parentheses. I'm going to say electrons if neutral. So again, the one on the worksheet, I changed the electrons. If you change the protons, you change the element. That's what Monday's lecture is all about. All right, the mass number is your protons plus neutrons. Or you can say the name of the two together is called the nucleons. Again, I'm just looking at your homework that you did it. You did your best. Um, as I'm going through the homework, this is now for you. Add stuff to it. Do it in color. So when you go back in two weeks to look at it, um, you know the things. This is like additional notes. All right, mass number minus atomic number will give you your neutrons. And then mass number plus atomic number, your mass number is your protons plus your neutrons. 
your atomic number is your protons, which equals your electrons because it's neutral. It gives you then when you add your protons, neutrons, and electrons, which we call collectively your total subatomic. I think I did one right at the end of the lecture um, on Monday, and there's an example on the next page. So that's what that means is the total subatomic. If you want, you can write total subatomic particles. Uh, all right, number seven. Uh, for the example there, the atomic number, it's phosphorus, is 15. So that is also your protons and your electrons. This is like the chart we fill in. The mass number has to be given to you. It is the 31. You don't get that from the periodic table. And then you subtract your protons. You get 16 neutrons. Uh, and periodic table, all we're looking at is the lower number. The top number doesn't tell us anything on these. So number eight is O. I wanted you to give me the full name. Oxygen. So, oxygen, thank you. This is good practice. Uh, number nine is F. By the way, it is just F. There is actually an FL now. It's it's one of the new ones. I think it's like number like 116 or something. Um, so just F. And that does stand for fluorine. All right, number 21 is if you have two symbols, first one's capital, second one's lowercase. And it is actually a very useful metal because it's, if you look on your periodic table, it's right next to titanium. Um, everybody knows about titanium and nobody knows much about scandium. Uh, it's, it's really lightweight. So really expensive golf clubs and things like that are actually made with scandium. All right. Um, yeah, it's like scandalous that nobody knows anything about it. And then 29 is CU, which stands for cuprous or copper. And copper does have two Ps, only one O. It's not Cooper, it's copper. I, I'm not going to mark you wrong if you write it Cooper. You just make me giggle when you do that. But um, any questions from the first page before I flip it over? All right. Let's move on. All right, number nine. Oh, by the way, when you guys upload stuff onto Blackboard, I did not enable for you to be able to, to submit twice because um, it is really hard on my part when you do that. Um, but I can if it becomes a problem. So just make sure you do the correct um, document. And if you mess up, just send me an email. There is also a little place where you can write a note to me if you need to. Um, I do not, I will see the note if it's before I've graded it. Often when I grade yours, I'll write a note to you um, and it will actually show you uh, in your grade book. It will show a little thing and it will say, hey, your teacher wrote you a note. I don't ever go back and look at yours again, so don't write me another note. You'd have to email me because I have this huge grade book with so many people and there's no way I can go back through everything two or three times. Um, that didn't make sense. Tiffany, go ahead. I apologize. I accidentally submitted them through the email, not through Blackboard. I you have, you have to do it on Blackboard too. Okay. Is that going to count against me as late for the SS thing since I did it that way? No, because I know you. I, okay. That's why I said this Ooh, is the okay, first assignment. This is the first assignment. There is grace. There is probably, um, I'm guessing there's probably a number of people are going, wait, I had to do the study set before this. Uh, so yeah, the study sets you want to upload um, before the class um, that you've done it. And yeah, I won't count that against you. Your worksheet you actually have until 11.59 to get it in. And again, there's always a little bit of a grace window, but I know, um, and actually with Tiffany's question, if you have 
a question on the worksheet and you're not able to come to office hours, you can send me an email um, and ask that. For the study set, um, I go over it. And so if you have a specific question, sometimes I can answer it. Sometimes on Wednesday, like today I had time, I was able to keep up with my emails. Um, just sometimes something comes up in my life because Wednesday is my day to rest before I have this. Um, but yeah, thank you, Kay, uh, Tiffany. If something like that happens, you guys can always, that's where you write that little note saying, oops, sorry. I had, I had a gal this summer who was very dear to me. Um, you're all very dear to me. Every time she submitted something, she would write, I'm so sorry, I'm so sorry. And I finally started like trying to build up her confidence. Um, I'm like, you're gonna be fine. You did great, your, your work is wonderful. So she'd be like, I'm so sorry, I didn't understand number two or something, so. All right, number nine, the two with similar properties. This, this question you should all star. You're gonna see, it was on the worksheet. You're gonna see this question on the midterm, somehow written, um, you're looking at families. So remember, that's how Mendeleev made his periodic table. Um, so families, if they're in the same family, so first one, sodium and cesium are in the same family. Um, a number two, it is, what, germanium, no, yeah, germanium and aluminum. I usually have a huge periodic table in front of me so I, I can look extremely smart. All right, strontium and barium, a uh, comment I was going to make with that they don't have to be one on top of the other it could be like calcium and barium so it's just the family is going to behave the same and again hydrogen is not in any family we show it there we'll see as we go through the term why it's there um, but it's really in a class of its own and then the last one of course the noble gases helium and neon all right uh naming the element this is family names that you want to be familiar with. You guys, periodic table that you print out, write your family names. Um, and my battery, I don't want to get kicked off. Apparently my battery, hold on. Flate, my battery is plugged in now. If I suddenly disappear, right, it will probably warn me again. Um, so the 1As are the alkali metals. So this is, sorry, this is group one. Um, there's two different designations for how to number the groups. So most of the periodic tables now just number it one through 18 straight across. So group one is the alkali metals. Uh, the old designation was with A's and B's, and we'll talk about that in a couple weeks. Um, I will not use the A and B designation, or I'll use both designations. Um, so that's why you could always ask me if it was a question on something. Uh, but the alkali metals are group one, and so period two, group one. That would be lithium. If I write name and so like on your worksheet or on a midterm, fill in the blanks. If it says give the name and you just said LI, you will get a half credit, but I'm looking for the full name that is lithium. Um, I did want to point out something. The first period is very short. It is just hydrogen and helium. All right. Uh, period three noble gas would be argon. Uh, period four earth metal is calcium. So there is no period one earth metal. You, I recommend if your periodic table is not numbered down the side that you do that. We're gonna do a lot of writing on our periodic tables um, over the next couple of weeks. So period four is calcium and so the earth metals are the group two the noble gases are the 18th group all the way over and the no uh, the halogens are right next to the noble gases 
so the period five one should be one two three four five iodine yeah all right the nonmetals so on the periodic table here we go uh, i'm pretty sure i talked about this there's the staircase that goes through here and this upper corner is the non-metals all your common metals are over here uh, the exception is hydrogen does belong on the other side that's why this this person the guy who made this periodic table thought hey let's show it over there um, all right so the non-metal would be in the first one it is hydrogen hydrogen is very interesting it is the only element that can be both uh, that only became true in the past like three years they have been trying because of this weirdness that it doesn't belong anywhere on the periodic table uh, they've been trying to make metallic hydrogen and they actually were successful about three years ago it, it I don't know if it won a Nobel Prize or it maybe is going to win Nobel Prize this year um, I never asked that question again um, so hydrogen so it's considered still a non-metal, but it's really in a class of its own. Uh, carbon is a non-metal. Fluorine is a non-metal. And Se is selenium. It's a non-metal. All right, the ones that touch the staircase. So depending on the periodic table that you print, you might want to make the staircase more obvious. I just wanted to point it out, it did not ask this, but SB is considered a semi-metal. I talked about this in the lecture. Uh, or a metalloid. So it is also neither a metal or a non-metal. Um, so it is it's touching on the line. So it, it has special properties. It's magical. Um, it is also um sorry i was trying to remember the full story i'm pretty sure ant antimony is what the ancient egyptians used as their makeup the black that you see the roman empire used it as an enemic i think i can't remember how you pronounce it but to make themselves vomit so that they could drink more wine so they were really into partying they were going crazy because of the lead poisoning but um antimony is a poison it's right below arsenic which you probably know is a poison um, and so antimony also behaves the same uh, its name is actually really cool if you look on wikipedia they give the boring thing they say it means anti-mono it's never found by itself uh, the story i heard is it's anti-monk that a monk gave it to his uh, a head monk gave it to the lower monks because they were fasting and they were never wanting to eat they wanted to just stay in prayer all the time and he thought it would help them to eat and end up killing them so they did eat more and then they died but um i don't know if that's a true story but periodic table has some really fun stories all right um metals the only answer was b luster means shiny i don't ask this question again just to remind you, uh, I will probably do a demo at some point, videotape. There's, if you ever actually saw any of these in there as a metal, we know them all as ions. They actually look, look like silver. Uh, they're lustrous. They're shiny. Uh, uh, this one's wrong because they are conduct heat. Thermal means heat. Uh, they are not brittle. Um, and, the word malleable means you can bend or pound into shapes, so that's why that one's wrong. That's why we wear jewelry of the metals. All right. Wait, so why was the non-malleable? I don't think I'm saying that right, but why was that? Because they bend? So actually, you can bend them. So um, non-malleable non means you cannot bend them. So if you think of a copper wire or an aluminum wire, like a paper clip, you can bend it into all different shapes. It's a metal. Um, and so non-mellable means you could not bend it. 
And so metals definitely, we can pound them into different shapes. So that's why that, it's just a vocabulary word. And again, I'm not gonna ask you that one again. I think that was Katie, you asked that. Um, all right, number 13. A uh, number of people asked me about number 13 during my office hours. And uh, so you're not alone if you're like, yeah, I wasn't sure on 13, I tried something. On this whole study set, your electrons are your protons, so you must have 20 protons. So number 20 is calcium. The full symbol, you would show the 20 down below, and then the protons plus the neutrons, it is 44. That is the symbol. Now I wanna point out something with this one. Look at the periodic table and you're like, no, it should be 40, Dr. Sherpa, why is it 44? Because again, this 40 is the atomic mass. What we are writing here is the mass number. The lecture on Monday, this gets really driven home to you. This has to be a whole number. This is specific for the isotope. So isotopes, that's the question that's missing from the study step, is isotopes have different um, neutrons. So they have different masses. And so this is one specific uh, isotope of calcium. Back to the question, I can't remember now who asked me earlier, calcium 44 must not be very common because the average is nowhere near 44. Um, so just kind of something. Most elements have like 10 or 20 isotopes. Um, so there's a lot of possibilities here. All right, radon, because of the size of the mass number, you'll know to look down towards the bottom and you get, it is Rn. You don't want the 222. You Again, it's a different isotope than the one on the periodic table. Um, so you show Rn and the 211. And I'm actually okay with just that symbol. If you want to show the full thing and show the 86, that's great. Uh, silver is AG. And so it's named Argentium for Argentina. So copper, silver, and gold are all in the same family. Uh, and they are based on increasing size, which is also their value. So gold is the heaviest and it's the most valuable one. Might help. Uh, silver is 47. So this subatomic particles is like the question earlier. This is protons, neutrons, and electrons. So we have to subtract the 47 electrons. How do I know it's 47 electrons? It's neutral. So my electrons are the same as my atomic number. I subtract and that will give me 110 as my protons plus neutrons. And that's the number that goes up there. All right, beryllium is BE. Extremely useful because it's so lightweight. The nine nucleons is your mass number. So that is your mass number. And then you just find BE is number four on your periodic table. All right, that would be one that, right, that's where we're using a different color, and so that's a helpful question. The chart, uh, a couple of people told me initially the chart was challenging, and then we did those charts, and they were like, oh, that's all we're doing. Uh, and then I threw HE as helium. And it's nice as you start to learn your, your elements, then you're not always looking at your periodic table for the name. Uh, and the atomic number of helium is two. And the mass number is three, because I gave it to you. The mass number is going to be given. So I either gave it to you here or I give it to you there. The protons are the atomic number. The neutrons would only be one. This is not a stable form of helium. And again, we're going to talk about that more on Monday. All right, nickel is Ni. So please be careful. N is nitrogen. N, I is nickel, it is a lowercase i. Um, the atomic number is 28, yes. And so that is our protons. And then you subtract 
and that gives you your neutrons. I am okay with you just writing nickel, but if you wanted to show your mass number 60, that's great too. Element 18 is AR, so that is argon. You have to go with my isotope, the 37. You, um, sorry, 18 protons, and when we subtract, that gives us what 19 is our neutrons. All right, and then this one we have to subtract first. So you get 38, which tells us it's element 38, and 38 is SR, and there's, um, so it is strontium. Um, strontium is extremely useful. It's used by the, I only know this because I had a student who told me this was his job in the Navy, with Navy, the helicopters in the Navy. Um, this is how it keeps the rotor going, is a radioactive form of strontium. The 90 is the number that goes there, All right? And then we get to 25. Hello? Hello, do you wanna inspire my students? Chem 104. I have a visitor, one of my students from last year. She's here to give you advice. She offered to come into my room is a mess, sorry. <laughs> right, right. This is, yeah, they're there, they're all muted. <laughs> they're scared of me still because it's the first week. Okay, so I don't want to take over class too much, but don't be afraid of me. <laughs> Basically, for a year, I had her go into the lab. Um, and you guys can you guys hear her? No. No. She's no. really quiet. <laughs> Can you guys hear? Now we can, yeah. Oh, okay. So, um, hi, you guys. My name is Janae, um, and I took uh, Dr. Sherpa for a total of a year. So I had her for 151, 221, 222, and 223. Um, and um, I think you guys are in um, an amazing class. She's an amazing professor. Um, I didn't hear you coming to say this. <laughs> no. Jessica, no, but seriously, in all like being very genuine and transparent, she, um, you know, you have to just be open to the experience and let this um, class just be something that is beyond the class and something that you're paying for, but also life changing too. You can find so much substance in this, and it goes well beyond just like like, you know, taking this class for, you know, a fulfillment or requirement, but also spiritually as well, and for your health. Um, but, you guys can still, yeah, can but still seriously, happen. like, I was just a regular student coming in, and she has been so um, transforming of my life, and she's been so profound on every level. And so just be open to the experience, be open just to, just go with the flow, because she's, um, kids in my kids class really? like uh -huh. five years ago yeah, yeah. <laughs> and you know it's just um you know she's unorthodox so she's not gonna go exactly to how like a book wants her to go she goes with her own flow and she goes with her own spirituality um and so just go with it you know and just be straight up with dr sherpa she's so open to um sharing and hearing so if something doesn't go well for you right away um, just reach out to her because she's here um, and she's, you know, it's, this is all a journey, you guys. And so um, I'm a person also that doesn't believe in accidents or chances or coincidence, but I believe everything's divinely set. And so you guys are here for a reason. Um, and so just learn and go with it. And whatever happens, happens, right? Um, but just talk with her and be open. And if, you know, if you feel like there's a disconnect with her at all, truly reach out to her and talk with her and you'll be surprised that you guys are we're more connected than what we think so um i just wish you guys all the best this semester with dr sherpa um and you guys are really in for an amazing ride just be open to it and just flow 
So that was it, guys. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yeah. you. Right. Affirmation. Affirmation. Sorry, you guys. I'm all so I'm so in the tie dye right now. <laughs> I was really gonna get a glass all up for a second. Okay. Let's see. Janae was always my master at affirmation. I'm gonna share again. And we're gonna keep going. Your your produce is on the middle shelf. Did Joey get it for you? There's a lot of chard on the spot here you keep going i'm gonna keep teaching so your photobombing moments done all right so that could be you next year you can photobomb hopefully we're not all still in this environment next year but who knows um so 25 um if you see bye it was wonderful to see you uh the star means it's a more challenging question and so it is going to require you to think um some all right so carbon it gives you the 13 and 14 um so add your lower number the six and seven they're not the same um if you subtract them they both end up with seven neutrons so you end up that's what they had in common for the next one, the oxygen and fluorine, I think it comes out the same. We take the eight and the nine, they both have 10 neutrons. So they have the same number of neutrons. All right, the last one's easy. They're both chlorine, so they're the same electrons. It did not give you the choice of protons, so the answer is electrons. Uh, and for this one, they're not the same element, it's not the electrons. The mass number for the nucleons, it would be the mass number is the same. Uh, and when we subtract, uh, if she wants it, but it doesn't look so good. If she wants a spaghetti squash, she can have it. I think that's on the top. All right. If you subtract, it doesn't come out the same. If you take the atomic number for chlorine and the atomic number for argon and you add they both come out as 54 so the answer was the same total subatomic all right we're done we did it questions I right. do have a question. Oh, go ahead, Nancy. Sorry, I mean, I cut up. Uh, okay, let's go back to number 9B. So uh, you said the AL and the GE is the same, is the same family. Oh, no, but you know what? I was, I think it's wrong. yeah, sorry. Thank you. Um, so Nancy gets the bonus point. We'll write it on here. <laughs> So I'll tell you a story, Nancy, all of you. Um, when I took chemistry in college, the first day the teacher's like, I am gonna make a mistake every class on purpose and whoever catches it wins a Snickers bar. And my first day of teaching, I didn't say that, but I was teaching and all of a sudden, yeah, I made a mistake. And a student like very kindly, like you just did, like said, um, do you mean this? And I'm like, oh, and I realized that this, this man, this gentleman who was my professor had been teaching for 25 years and he just knew he was gonna make a mistake. Um, and so if, if, um, if it's something like that, thank you. I looked at my periodic table funny. Um, it should be tin. Yeah, I don't know why I did that. All right, so thank you. So it should have been for all of you, uh, germanium and tin are the two that are the same. Aluminum would have been the same as gallium, indium, and thallium. Um, I, I wear glasses and they glare sometimes on the computer and so I can't see and I also can't find my glasses today. Um, and so sometimes, that's why you see me squinting and looking funny sometimes. Is there any other questions? Go ahead, I'm Katie. I'm glad you said that because I had already marked it wrong and I was gonna get very confused. <laughs> Yeah, I did the same thing, actually. I was like, oh, I must have been wrong somehow. So that so, that makes sense. So Janae should have said that. She should have said that I'm very humble. She would tell you that. Um, 
that I, I make mistakes. We all make mistakes and you have to forgive yourself. Um, was there any other questions though? All right, so again, the study set was supposed to be turned in before class. You know, again, if it's five, 10 minutes late, because we all have Wi-Fi stuff, but I'm just looking to see that you tried it. And then your copy that you have at home, because you're just taking a picture or whatever, you're going to write on. There is one favor I have for all of you. If you can learn, because your study sets are two pages, to scan it as one document. Um, the email I sent today had iPhone and Android instructions. That makes my life a lot easier, uh, especially like the lab. The lab is four pages, and so to have it as one document that I can scroll through. Um, so I kind of feel like that. I'm not going to take points off, but it's just asking as a favor. All right, that we're done with. I have the worksheet is due by 11.59 tonight. Again, I will stay around after if you have questions. This is just one page. Uh, somebody said they had a question. Go ahead. Can I uh, see C and D for number 25? Sorry, I didn't quite see that. 25C, they came out as the same total subatomic. So you had to add the math number and the atomic number. Uh, and then D, they were the same electrons, because if they're the same element, their electrons are the same at this point in the class. That will change after the first midterm, but we'll okay. worry about it. that's a month away. Thank you. Anybody, anybody else questions before we move on? Uh, for that 25D, I put protons. That Would that still count? So the reason, Kaylee, um, that wasn't one of the choices. Oh, it gave okay. you only neutrons, electrons, nucleons, and total subatomic. Got it. That's, that's usually the mistake I make, and somebody has to call me out on that. So <laughs> Thank you. You were, you were limited to those choices, but you are correct. Um, if, if that had been a choice, it would have been protons. Alrighty, thanks. Anybody else? And please ask, because somebody else has the same question. Going, going, all right. Uh, worksheet, you'll do, you'll submit, you can hang out after. Um, and we talked about, so we're gonna move into the notes. Um, Actually, while I have it here, well, the first page of the notes is Tinkerbell. And I actually pre-recorded this page, so it tells you it's already been posted. And apparently, like, at least 18 people, so most of you have actually already watched it, or you can watch it again. Uh, I just want to make a few comments. One, you should definitely connect the dots, so you, and you can color her in. Um, six figs are tedious, and... What Tinkerbell was trying to tell you is to have a respect for them. Um, and the study set for Monday will have more practice with it. And so you'll submit the study set, but we'll go over it, and that will hopefully help you to have a better respect for it. We're going to get into math now, so hopefully you have a calculator. And um, I'm going to do the math on the board. So before I get into the math, I actually wanted to talk about your lab. Um, so your lab has like four pages. And so this one, right, the first page, you can type it in any format. You can, you can write it on this piece of paper. You're gonna watch a video, you just write your comments. Uh, this is just matching and stuff. Actually, these two answers I gave you in class the other day when I talked about the Ernest Rutherford. Um, so we can actually talk about them right now real quick. The fact that pretty much it all goes through, all the particles went through. Does anybody remember what that meant? That since all the particles just go right through, they never get deflected. Kind of goes back to the question that truth Doesn't most question. of the mass um, concentrate into the nucleus? Yeah, so you can either say it that way, or you can say it that it's mostly empty space. Like mostly right. is an understatement. It's virtually all emptiness. There's nothing there. There's no mass there. Um, and then what you said, Shaylee, would actually be then the answer for L is that the mass, well, the mass and the positive is all concentrated in the center, uh, which he called the nucleus. And that was actually the part that baffled them 
because positives should not want to be together, right? Positives are supposed to repel each other. Um, and so there's a lot of theories of how the positives are all held in. Um, there's actually an organization in the nucleus, which is really crazy. But um, so yeah, the first one is it's virtually empty space. The mass is concentrated. And the second one, the angles are that all the positive is also concentrated in the nucleus. So he came up with the idea of the nucleus. All right, um, and then learning your element names. Um, and the mat metric I'm gonna go over on the board. So I'm gonna stop sharing. Um, hopefully my video camera is gonna stay in focus. What I see when I look at the screen is different than what you guys see.